What's up, everyone? Just got home from the theater, and I went to see Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, which is technically the fifth installment in the Jurassic Park franchise, or second Jurassic World film, if you're going by the previous movie, of course. And I gotta say, after hearing all the mixed reviews and about hearing people are saying how bad the ending was, after finally seeing this movie for myself, I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I did Jurassic World. Uh, it's kind of hard to believe, but yeah, I did enjoy this more than Jurassic World, and I think it's mostly because I knew what I was going in for. I knew this, I already knew way ahead of time that this movie was not going to be able to top the original films by Steven Spielberg, and knowing that going in, I was fully prepared to get immersed in this uh, new Jurassic World film. And uh, this is technically my fourth Jurassic Park movie seeing on the big screen. Um, I did see the original Jurassic Park film at, at the theaters with my aunt when I was little. Jurassic Park The Lost World I did not see until that came out on VHS tape. I did go see Jurassic Park 3 with a friend. Uh, Jurassic World I went to see alone and for Fallen Kingdom I went to see alone as well. And uh, there was a lot of people screaming. <laughs> there was so much screaming and so many people going, Oh my god, no! No! Like. I don't think I've ever heard people this terrified at a Jurassic Park movie in my entire life. Like, really, like, I guess this movie is somewhat scary to most people, but I was not scared because after seeing a lot of these type of movies, I kind of know what to expect. So during certain moments in the film, I wasn't really jumping out of my seat going, Oh my God, no! <laughs> you know, I, Pretty much, I was not scared. Well, there's one part, one part near the end that kind of caught me by surprise, but it caught me by surprise. It did not scare me. It just caught me by surprise. But uh, after finally seeing it for myself, yeah, I was fine with this movie, and I will call it out for its faults, such as certain plot holes, like um, uh, the one scene where Owen, Claire, and that other guy, uh, Franklin, escape off the island in a truck onto this giant boat full of like these mercenary guys that tried to kill them on the island or at least left them for dead on the island and I'm thinking okay they're gonna see them and probably hold them for hostage um no instead all Claire does is puts on a hat and gets out the truck and they all turn around and watch the island go up in smokes and flames I'm like uh what <laughs> you're telling me nobody else on the boat saw that they're, they're they're right there like they're, they're literally everyone standing right there <laughs> i'm like oh that kind of uh confused the hell out of me i was like why did they why did the writers write this scene in such a way where it kind of made very little sense if somebody could explain that to me please <sighs> but besides that minor gripe i did have a good time with uh everything else in the film I would say you'll definitely have a fun time with like the first maybe hour and 12 minutes because I was looking at the time uh, when they uh, got away from the island. So pretty much the build up to the island and when all the chaos breaks loose on the island, it, that's when you're going to have like the most amount of fun in like the first half. Uh, and oh yeah, let me talk a little bit about the beginning of the movie with the uh, T-Rex and the Mosasaurus, which was awesome. It was like dark and raining and it was almost like a horror movie where the t-rex is chasing that one guy who's going for the helicopter it was awesome i loved that beginning man and but uh when it gets to the part with the island it got really really suspenseful like i was like whoa i'm kind of like on the edge of my seat like i have not been on the edge of my seat in the jurassic park film in a long time this is kind of cool and um that whole plot hole thing when they got on the boat made me go what what and they literally was hiding out the whole entire time on the boat before they got to before they got back to uh homeland in california where where the uh lockwood estate is there were like certain scenes on the boat where loud sounds were being made and i was like none of these mercenary guys are hearing any of this what what <laughs> like uh, certain plot devices or my plot armor or whatever you want to call it but uh 
whatever. That that's gonna make me drop my score just a tad bit on the the scale or the rating scale when I give my rating for this film. Um, but once they get off the island back to uh, America in California, because that's where the Lockwood Estate is located. It's in Northern California somewhere, as it was stated on the screen. Um, it does slow down quite a bit. Um, I did not mind that entire sequence when things were slowing down. Um, cause I, I felt like, I, I, I don't know. It was like, I, I was just fine with it. That's all. I, I was really just not going, Oh, can we get to some dino carnage already? Like most people were, because I understand most people, that's all they wanted to see. And you do get that, but you know, it has to slow down quite a bit. And I was like, you know, this is not bad. Just some moment of serenity and not just a bunch of CGI crap being thrown in your face all the whole time. Like, I'm liking this. I'm liking this whole uh, sequence of stuff that's, you know, not, like the whole sequence of stuff of nothing really going on is what I'm trying to say here until the hell breaks loose, of course, with the Indominus Raptor or Endoraptor, which is their brand new hybrid dinosaur that they made with uh, the Velociraptor Blue's DNA because they wanted to make a new dinosaur that can um, that can follow human commands, pretty much, because they wanted to, I guess, weaponize the dinosaurs in a way like they kind of tr- did in the last film, Jurassic World. Uh, and once you see how they kind of control this Endoraptor, I was like, ah, oh, it's that's interesting. It, it, it's um, different. I'm like, okay, hopefully for the next movie they don't make another hybrid dinosaur, or else, <laughs> this, or else it will really start to feel redundant with the whole plot. But the way this movie ended, uh, I have a good feeling they're not going to do that again. And they're going to do something completely uh, somewhat different. Um, I mean, if put it this way. If you've seen Jurassic Park The Lost World, where the T-Rex got loose in the city, uh, then I have a good idea what's going to go down for the next installment for the next Jurassic World film. If it is going to go down the way I'm thinking in my head right now, because I'm thinking of something totally awesome. <laughs> um but I, I don't know. I mean, they could totally not do it that way and just hit me with something completely with, out of left field. So I guess we'll have to wait and see what they have in store for the next Jurassic World movie. I don't know. The way I'm... See, what I'm thinking of is we're going to get the most action we are ever going to see in a Jurassic Park film but with the next installment. Um if it's going to happen the way I think it's going to happen. I mean, if you've seen the ending of this film, and if you've seen the post credit scene, then you pretty much have a good idea of what I'm thinking about right now. But, anyways, going back to the Endoraptor, uh, it was pretty awesome, I gotta say. I mean, at first I was worried about it, because I was like, oh man, are we really repeating the same steps as the previous film? But after seeing the Endoraptor in action, I was like, this thing is kind of cool and terrifying. (laughs) Um, And seeing it tear apart humans and going after the the main characters, Owen and Claire, and of course, uh, some of the supporting cast members, like this uh, little girl who is also somewhat of a subplot, because that leads to somewhat of another twist in the film, which I won't spoil, but when they revealed that twist, I was like, meh. It did nothing for me. I, I, I didn't really, I, I didn't really feel negative towards it or positive. I was just like, meh. Like, okay, so that's a thing that exists, I guess. <laughs> um, it, it's nothing ridiculous, like they mixed the a girl's DNA with dinosaur DNA or anything like that. It's nothing. It's nothing that silly. Trust me. It's just something that just I felt like the movie would have been fine without it. But it's there. Um, So you do get to see a good amount of screen time of the dinosaurs when they're on the island, and I would say definitely near the very end. Um, As for the cast members, 
you'll get to spend a lot of time with uh, Owen and Claire, played by Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard. And of course, you have your supporting cast members, Justin Smith, who plays Franklin, and uh, Daniela, who plays Zia. Uh, as for Franklin, I felt like the movie would have been fine without him, too, because you could tell you can tell he was just there for comic relief. And uh, for, for uh, I guess for the most part, he was comical. He was it was funny in most of the scenes, but it kind of felt like he was just there because in some scenes he was like just there and some other th scenes he's just gone and I kind of like really forgot about him and then he's like shows up again and I'm just like oh yeah that guy is in this movie <laughs> um <sighs> same thing with um Daniela's uh, uh character as well Zia she's like a medical analysis or somewhat of a, a dino vet or whatever um I guess she served a purpose by helping out the main characters, um, and helping them with, uh, uh, Blue, the Velociraptor, but still, it's kind of like, these characters, I just felt like they were kind of there. I mean, the ones, the ones you're gonna see the most are Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard, and of course you have the, uh, villains, uh, let's see, the villains, one of them is Toby Jones, who plays Mr. Eversall, and the other one is, uh, Rafe Spall, who plays Eli Mills. I didn't feel like they were super bad villains. <laughs> I felt like they were more like super bad investors. Like, eh, they weren't, they were not threatening. Let's put it that way. They were not really that threatening. I mean, there was this one guy who seemed maybe just a little bit threatening. And that was like the, uh, the one mercenary guy. I keep forgetting his name. Um, let me go to IMDB real quick and see if I could find it. Uh, looking through all the characters' names right now. Hopefully I could find it. Jeez. I'm, I don't think I'm going to be able to find it. Oh, there it is. Uh, Mr. Wheatley, played by Ted Levine. Yeah, all right. So Ted Levine was also like a somewhat of a third villain in this film. And uh, I don't know if he was threatening. <laughs> uh, especially that one part when you see him uh, kind of like double cross the main characters. And he just kind of just leaves Chris Pratt for dead on the island because he was tranquilized. Uh, I don't know. It wasn't that threatening, really. He's, he just had, like, a super tough guy motif about him. But I, I did not feel threatened by that guy. And especially the other two main villains, they were just more like... <laughs> super bad investors let's, let's put it that way if you've seen the film you know what i'm talking about because of the whole auctioneer thing where they try to auction off the dinosaurs to people from different countries and you could just see like the the numbers racking up on the computer and he's just like looking at the money going yes yes more money <laughs> well, obviously he did not say that in the movie but he he, he had to look about him. You could tell through his eyes, so... They were just kind of meh. But I did have fun with this film. If I would have to rank this movie amongst the other Jurassic Park films, I would say this is my third favorite. Well, actually, let me give it a score out of 10. I would give this maybe a 7.5 out of 10. Maybe a 7.5 to an 8. Uh, 8 might be a little bit too much. Maybe, maybe just 7.5. 7.5 out of 10 if i would have to rate this amongst the other jurassic park films uh let's see well number one would be the original jurassic park number two jurassic jurassic, jurassic park the lost world excuse me i can't speak today uh number three i would have to say jurassic world fallen kingdom definitely uh now my third favorite on the list and as for uh fourth and fifth one on my top favorites would have to be Jurassic World and finally Jurassic Park 3 because Jurassic Park 3 will always and forever will be my least favorite Jurassic Park movie um but I did enjoy this a lot more than the third and the previous Jurassic World film um even though there's a lot of other people out there who thinks Jurassic World is better than this movie I don't know I don't know what it is about this one I just liked a lot maybe Maybe it's because I knew <laughs> I knew what to expect and I knew what I was going in for. Um, I, do, I did get enough dinosaur screen time, especially 
the first uh, hour and 14 minutes when they're on the island with the erupting volcano, I got to see a lot of dinosaurs, what I wanted to see. And after things slow down, you get to see more dinosaur action near the very end. Um, and not just with the Endoraptor, but events that take place after uh, the Endoraptor near the very, very end, which was kind of cool to see. Um, there was a lot of people in my theater very scared. <laughs> I don't know why. I guess there was like certain scenes that... Uh, that were very surprising or very shocking or just had like a, a jump scare, uh, I guess, jump scare facade about them. Um, but after seeing a bunch of these type of films, I was not really scared, but I guess it's scary for everyone else. <laughs> um, especially the one part with the Endoraptor uh, and the one guy, uh, which I, I'm not going to spoil. I'm not going to spoil. It's just one scene with the Endoraptor where... There were people getting up and screaming and running out of the theater going, No! No, no, no! It's too scary! I'm just like, really? Really? <laughs> this is scary? Like, eh, alright, whatever. It's it's a, a fun Jurassic World film. I guess that's what I could say about it. That's all I can say about it. Uh, I mean, if you're going to see this movie, uh, you gotta know what you're gonna go in for. You gotta know that... No matter what, they're not going to repeat the same greatness they already achieved with the uh, Steven Spielberg films. You know, they're never, they're never going to capture that lightning in a bottle again. Um, so I think if you go in knowing that, I think you'll be fine. Uh, there are some plot holes and uh, <laughs> major questionable uh, plot armor, I guess you can say. That's going to make you go WTF, so be ready for that. I don't know why they decided to write write it the way they did I, I i don't know what was going on in the writer's mind maybe there are some deleted scenes that are going to be revealed in the uh the dvd who knows or uh blu-ray i should say or 4k now everybody's using 4k i personally do not use 4k anything because uh I'm not going to rebuy, I'm not going to rebuy all of my favorite movies on 4K because as soon as I do that, the next big thing is going to come out and everybody's going to be like, oh, 10K is the next, <laughs> it's the new, next hottest thing to buy and now everybody's going to be buying that and as soon as everybody buys that, buys that 14K is the next new hot thing. It, uh, they always do this when it comes to technology. <laughs> That's why I'm just going to be sticking to Blu-rays for a very, very long time. Uh, so, alright, that's my little review for uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I I was entertained. I was really entertained by this film. I was a lot more entertained than the previous film. I mean, don't get me wrong, the previous film had a lot of entertaining, uh, fun moments, but... I don't know, something felt kind of off about the previous film. I, I guess it's the fact that they used a little bit too much CGI. It, they didn't really... Uh, they didn't really go back to a lot of the animatronics, or at least blend the animatronics well with CGI like they did in the original films, or the at least the first film. Uh, and yeah, there was quite a bit of CGI in this film as well, but I felt like it was done a little bit better, or at least polished up a little bit better than the previous film. And, uh, I'm not sure what else I can say. I mean, uh, if you want me to talk about the dinosaur screen time, you do get quite a bit of that when they're on the island. Uh, as for the T-Rex, you do get to see him in an awesome sequence in the beginning of the film. Uh, you get to see him as an animatronic in the middle of the film as well, or towards the middle, you get to see him as an animatronic. And uh, you get to see him in a very awesome scene at the end. In a very shocking, surprising scene that it certainly shocked me. <laughs> it kind of like made me jump a little bit. I was like, whoa, whoa, that's awesome. That's kind of cool. We still have the third or technically sixth film, <laughs> which will be out in like another two or three years. And we'll see how well that does. Um, but yeah, I would say before... It, well, I would say if you are a Jurassic Park fan, if you are uh, planning on seeing this film, just know what you're going to go in for, and I think you will be fine. Uh, once again, I'm going to give this movie mm, seven and a half 
out of 10, I think. Yeah, yeah, 7.5 out of 10. Uh, definitely my third favorite in the Jurassic Park franchise, and I enjoyed it for what it was. And I definitely, I definitely enjoy all the merchandise that Mattel has been putting out with to with the toys. I, you've, if you've been keeping up with my channel and seeing all the uh, toy reviews I've done for Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom, uh, then you know that I was going to see this movie regardless. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a fun Jurassic World film. There are some moments where I, I guess it might be scary. I, I don't know if you're easily scared or <laughs> if you don't like certain. Uh, jump scares or unexpected, unexpected shocking moments. Let's put it that way, because the scenes that kind of made most people scream in the theater were like unexpected shocking moments, not really kind of a jump scare, because you kind of you kind of see it coming from a, a mile away, sort of, sort of. But whatever. Um, I like this for what it was. I will definitely be buying it on blu-ray and uh and yeah be adding it to my uh jurassic park blu-ray collection minus the third movie because i did not <laughs> i did not buy that movie on blu-ray yet because i'm waiting till they release the uh the next jurassic world film then i will think about buying the super awesome jurassic park dv or blu-ray collection box set which uh they already made for uh, the first four films? Yeah, up to Jurassic World, I believe. And I'm like, why are people buying this when they're gonna make... Well, when they're coming out with Fallen Kingdom and they're gonna make another one after Fallen Kingdom. They're, they're just gonna make another Blu-ray box set, so... Whatever. So, alright, I think I rambled on for long enough, and, uh... I'll see you guys, uh... sometime later. Maybe for the next movie. I'm gonna go see, uh... Ant-Man and the Wasp. And I don't know what I'm going to see after that. Um, skeptical about Venom. Really skeptical about Venom because he's, they're not including Venom in the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I heard they're not going to have Spider-Man in the movie. I mean, they might have him in there as Peter Parker as somewhat of a cameo. But I don't know, man. Doing a Venom origin story without Spider-Man. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Damn you, Hollywood. Damn you, Hollywood. Just keep repackaging stuff and putting it out there and making old stuff new again. They're either making old stuff new again or they like beating a dead horse. Like Star Wars. <laughs> Alright. Uh, later.